Hello and welcome to another episode of Let's Plant. My name is Chuck and you're probably wondering where I am. So I finally did it. I got myself a wireless microphone and I can finally be free. I don't have to stay too close to my camera and this allows me to move around when I start doing my build videos. And I'm pretty sure I'll be doing this a few episodes from now. So right now I'm still working on my educational videos but as soon as summer ends i'll be focusing on cleaning up my garden tidying up and doing a lot of build in this episode you're going to circle back and talk more about flower stalks <laughs> there's so many ways that flower stalks would be of use to you and the first of which would be propagation so i've got with me a bunch of echeveria domingos and as you can see they're pushing out flower stalks and lots of these flower stalks have leaves along the stem there's so many ways to go about this and i previously published a video on the topic but to summarize one of the things that you could do is to pluck off the leaves from the stem another would be to chop the stalk into multiple parts you could also chop off the flower stalks themselves and replant the stalk or you could remove the flowers and of course with the flowers themselves you could do cross pollination this, this would allow you to create your own hybrids now that whichever method you decide to do is entirely up to you although i do have a few guidelines if you will with regular size leaves such as these you would want to pluck them off or chop off the stalk into multiple parts. Doing either of those means that you're going to do leaf propagation. For leaves that are easy to remove, such as these ones, plucking is all right. And I usually prefer plucking because it consumes a lot less space in my propagation trays. But otherwise, if you're not confident about how you pluck the leaves, or if you're dealing with larger leaves, such as the from the freely plants or the gibiflora hybrids, then you will want to chop up the stalk into sections. The underlying mechanism is the same. You're basically just relying on each node to produce a pop. As for the other methods, you could just refer to the flower stalk propagation video. When I propagate from leaves, I usually use a tray filled with premium potting mix because that way I don't have to disturb them all the way until they start growing. Basically, it's a set and forget system, but it would be perfectly fine if you leave them without soil until they start sprouting roots because it doesn't really matter up until that point. But again, in my case, I like things to be very easy. So what I do is uh, I go for a set and forget method and most of the time I really do forget. So this method really works for me. All I have to do is to place them in a tray with soil that would last them until they turn into little plants. Another thing they could be used for is for identification and if you look closely at the flowers of this Echeveria Domingo and this Afterglow, they have some sort of resemblance and this is because they have a common parent and that would be the Echeveria Cante and the Cante flowers are typically very large like as you can see from here and if you put them together they have the same shape, they have the same the way the length of the flowers and the way they recurve outwards even the shape of the flower stalk the way the flower stalk branches out stuff like that and waiting for flower stalks to come out is a good way to confirm if not get a good idea of the id of the plant and the reason this is relevant is that the flowers are based on the species or at least each species of echeveria have a different look for different type of flowers and comparing their flowers against a database of flower photos such as the ICN website that would help you narrow down or positively ID your plant. I have also started creating my own repository of images. If you head into my website seriscapades.com there's a section on Seriscapedia called plant information. You could have a look. I've uploaded a bunch of photos now. I think there are over 20 and there would be a lot more to come because a lot of my plants are pushing out flower stalks and I've yet and I'm waiting for most of them to bloom. Again, this is the second purpose, identification. Now, in order for you to understand a bit more about what I mean when I say that the species determine the look and the shape and the overall appearance of the flowers, take a look at this Mona Loa. The flower stalks are quite tall, really tall compared to the rosette. And if you look at the flowers, there's a general arrangement in that 
the central stem and the main part of the stem, the main part of the flower stalk goes really tall and everything else just comes out offsets from the main stalk. While if you, if you compare this, although it does branch out, it creates an arrangement where more flowers come out from the branches. But if you look at uh, a Gibi flora hybrid such as the Mona Loa, new branches come out from the sides. And the way I would describe it is it's, it looks like a Christmas tree where the, the middle bit is tall and everything else are on the branches. Let me show you a few more Gibi flora hybrids. One of the problems with flower stalks is that they attract a host of pests, especially during summer. It's summer right now. And because of that, you're going to risk having lots of pests and diseases in your garden. And as soon as I see an outbreak, what I do is to remove all the flower stalks and deal with it with my choice of insecticide. So because of that, I usually go and just take my second tours, chop up some flower stalks, say this one. I try to chop as low as I can go because the other thing that flower stalks tend to do is to deform the parent rosette. So as you can see, it is some of the flower stalks are pushing from under the leaves and they're forcing some pressure on the leaves which means that the leaves would have to grow at some weird position, weird orientation just to get around, just so the flower stalk could get around the leaf. So if you're the type who wishes to enter your plant in a competition and have it maintain or retain a lovely shape, a lovely rosette shape, then removing flower stalks is something that you would typically want to do. And this leads me into the next point, flower stalks make good lightsabers. And like I mentioned earlier, with Gibi floral hybrids such as these, the flowers, the leaves on the flower stalks tend to be so large, it's so hard to remove them cleanly. And in this case, chopping the flower stalk into sections would be a good idea. And all you have to do is to lay them somewhere dry and just hope some pops would appear from the nodes. So that's another tip for you, propagation with large leaves. If you recall the discussion in the previous episode on plant dormancy, then you will remember that flower stalks appear after the plant has experienced dormancy. So as soon as it wakes up and enters active growth, flower stalks appear. So if you're planning to do your own hybrids, your own propagations using the flowers, using pollen and stuff, then you'll want to control when the flower stalks appear. And again, I've mentioned that in the previous episode, so refer to that for more details. Man, you know what? It feels so good being able to refer to previous videos. It saves me a lot of work, man. All of these flower stalks left in my plants have attracted all sorts of pollinators into my garden and that includes insects such as bees, butterflies, even flies and a lot of little tiny birds and I've let them have a good run they've enjoyed lots and lots of the honey, the pollen from all of my plants but right now a lot of them, a lot of the early blooms are starting to dry out and they're looking quite ugly so I'm going to take this chance now to chop off the flower stalks from the old plants I've been waiting for so long to clean up my garden You'll notice that a lot of them, well, all of them are pointing in that direction. This is a good way to know which way the sun is because the flower stalks tend to bend towards the light. And on this spot, since they're right next to the fence, the only way they could get lots of light is, is if they face that way. Another thing that the flower stalks are good at is indicating where lots of light is coming from. So if you find yourself wondering how you should reorient them, then wait for flower stalks, they will tell you how to do it.
Another thing that seems to trip people up a lot is determining whether an Echeveria is putting out flower stalks with pops on it or just regular flower stalks. There are many signs to watch out for and if you've been looking at Echeveria flower stalks for a long time, then this would be really easy to spot. Let's go through these signs one by one. One of the signs that it is a pop and not a flower stalk would be the height. As you can see, the small aloe is pushing out a few flower stalks. There's one here right next to me and two others right here. And something that would stand out immediately would be their heights. As you can see, these two are quite tall and are pushing outwards, upwards. And this one here has stayed this height and looks more like a pop compared to these two. So the first indicator for me, not a definite sign, but something that supports it would be the height. So pops growing on long stems would tend to be a lot shorter compared to the regular flower stalks. So if you're seeing something like this and it's also pushing out a regular flower stalk, being able to compare the two would make it a lot easier to determine that this is indeed a pop. Another thing you'll notice on flower stalks is that flower stalks, they tend to keep growing and growing and growing. So as in the previous example, the flower stalk is too long, too tall, it stretches out a lot and that leads us to our second sign. Take this one for instance, as you can see the stalk, the stem tends to have a bit of color when exposed to the sun. In this case, it's a bit of red, pink. But as you trace it upwards towards the end near the tip, you can see that it's really light, which means that it has been growing recently, it has been stretching. So if you find that it keeps doing that, then there's a high chance that it is a flower stalk because it keeps stretching. It will keep stretching until it terminates into buds like this one. Another sign that it might be a flower stalk, a regular flower, is that the leaves, they taper up in size. Flower stalks tend to have large leaves at the bottom and progressively goes smaller as you reach the tip. The next sign that you might be having a pop instead of flower stalk is that if you compare the leaves, leaves on stalks containing pops tend to be larger than leaves on flower stalks. As you can see this one definitely larger than this one. This would be more obvious in some species such as the agavoides, the elegans, because they, these species tend to have little, a lot smaller leaves along the flower stalk. Unfortunately, I do not have any flowering specimens of those species, so maybe next time. Another sign to watch out for would be the density of the leaves on the tip. If you look closely at this blade runner, it looks like this might be an actual rosette. The rosette itself, it's compact, lots of leaves, it looks like an actual plant. But there would be exceptions. Take this black prince for instance, it has a rosette forming here. But if you look closely at the middle, there seems to be lots of buds coming out. So this is still a flower stalk. For this sign, this is not necessarily a positive ID, but it gives you something to filter out with. There's still a chance that these two are going to turn out to be flower stalks, but for now, I'm having high hopes that it is a pop. And with these things, all you have to do is to wait and see what develops out of it. Another thing to watch out for would be the branching out of the stem. If it seems to create lots of branches, then chances are it is pushing out lots of flower stalks. Pops do not tend to do that. I believe I already mentioned this earlier, but if a rosette or an apparent rosette pushes out its own flower stalk, then chances are this is an actual pop. And finally, you have to look at the gaps between the leaves. Usually they would start out with lots of gaps between leaves, but as they form the rosette, the gaps would be really small and they would stagnate. And this relates to the first few signs wherein the stalk is not as tall as the others. So rather than look at the overall height, you could just check the gaps between the leaves. So those eight are at least signs that you could watch out for to determine if what you're seeing is a pop or a flower stalk. There might be many other signs to watch out for, but they're escaping my mind at the moment. You could check out this link. I posted a blog post over at my website discussing exactly all of these things with more pictures. It also contains a little quiz that you could use to test yourself and see if you could recognize the signals. I've been waiting for this chance for quite a while just to tidy up my garden, you know, just starting off with the flower stalks. And I only got to do it now. Unfortunately, that's all I can do right now because it's still summer, still hot. I still have the shade cloths up and I wouldn't want to do any repositioning, repotting or re-landscaping as long as this is still up. And I can't do that right now with a shade cloth to stay here, especially if the plants end up getting transferred to a spot where they are getting more sunlight than before. So this means that I still have to wait until spring, no, until autumn before I start landscaping. So cleaning up the flower stalks is all I can do for now to that end. And speaking about changing seasons, I think I would like to speak more about the differences, about the changes that you would find 
once you shift from one season to the other, I believe that would be a good topic for the next episode. Now with all of that said, I'll see you in the next episode and I'll continue cleaning up here. Special thanks to all of my Patreon supporters, especially Oscarino, Julie Seal, Snap Kui, Gloria Ninotti, Camila Narvaez, Linda Leal, Gwen Ott, Q2, Jesse May, and Ronin Perez. Thank you so much. Without your help, a lot of this is not possible. You should also check out my website, seriescafes.com. I have a plant shop and Seriescapedia section right there. I push updates once in a while, so make sure to check back from time to time. And finally, follow me on Instagram, that's at Seriescapades. I post a photo of an Echeveria every single day under the hashtag DailyEcheveria.